2, begin reading in verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if there any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not at every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That, that last verse, verse 5, is our text verse this evening. Uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, please bless this service this evening. Please help me as I preach. Lord, please help me be a help to the folks, an encouragement to them to keep going for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And this evening, I uh, want to speak on the subject of uh, positive through testing. Positive through testing. The idea of being uh, positive. I, I thought about putting testing positive, you know, kind of going with, uh, with COVID, but I don't know. Maybe too soon, I don't know. Uh, but the, the po being positive through testing. As we know, uh, I think I mentioned last week or the week before, and I keep, you know, mentioned different things uh, as far as 2020. And uh, the, the kind of Maybe encouraging, or you know, point out, uh, you know, struggling here, struggling there. And uh, I think it was a week or two ago that I, I mentioned. I think I bring it up because I'm trying to encourage myself. You know, it's because uh, I, I think I told someone recently. I'm I'm not on the I'm not I'm not on the verge of you know I'm not on the edge. You know, and I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm not you know <laughs> ready to throw in the towel. Uh, but it. Uh, there's no doubt it this is wearing on me you know uh, different things that we're putting up with and and uh, the, the COVID and you know just everything that goes with that and the, the election and everything that goes with that uh, it continues to go with that and uh, <laughs> just different things and uh, and I, I think we all have to say that uh, you know staying positive isn't it you know it's it seems like we all have our ups and downs. It seems like uh, America's kind of in a collective, you know, down slope. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be coming back to the other side. And I uh, almost made some, some remark about who's going to be president. And, but I don't know how fast we're going to come back out of that. But anyhow, uh, well, at least within four years or so, we'll be coming back up the other side. And uh, the, the, is, but staying positive is not always easy. There are times when it's easier, there's no doubt. And then there are times where you think, you know, it, it's really hard to be positive. But there are some things that we can do as Christians uh, to, help, to, to help us to stay positive. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not, uh, you know, you know, basically, uh, we're talking about the things we can do uh, as far as uh, spiritual wise, not you know, meditate or do any of that stuff, but uh, but the idea of uh, things we can do uh, to stay positive. And I think we'd all agree as Christians that we have a lot of things, a lot to be thankful for. And we preached about that this morning, and that's true. Well, we in, in the, and we need to focus on those things. But there are some things we can do to help stay positive. Uh, now and in the future. This, this is something that'd be good for now and later, you know. And uh, first, we see that we need we need to think positive thoughts. Philippians four eight that says, "Whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. Think positive thoughts." You know, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not thinking. I'm not talking. About, oh, you know, I'm a good guy. A good guy, you know, you know, which is all true. And, but the thing is, not try to, uh, you know, psych yourself up. I'm talking, you know, there are things we can do as far as in our spiritual lives to, to keep us going, to keep to stay positive. We need to think on the positive thoughts. And the, the, 
we need to, as Christians, we need to discipline ourselves to think on those those good things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, maybe you're an exception, but thinking on the, those positive things, it doesn't really come natural. It's something you have to work at. Yeah. I know there are times we, uh, I think it was last year we had uh, the a list of things that we're thankful for. You know, that's a good thing. That, and, uh, and I think I mentioned not too long ago that I still have that in my in, in my prayer journal. And that, now the, you know, being Thanksgiving this week, that's always a good uh, kind of a, a reminder to, to think about that, those things. We should be thankful all the time, but uh, it seems like, especially during this time, it's always uh, nice to think about things we're thankful for. You know, we can, <laughs> we can uh, uh, keep that optimistic outlook by memorizing scripture, by uh, making, like I said, that thankful list. And I, we were, Sam and I were out hunting with my nephew, and uh, we're taking time, uh, it, and uh, like Sam mentioned, he, he goes out, he, he's praying when he's out hunting, and, and I was thinking about uh, different things and, and things I was thankful for. And uh, I, I was thinking of, uh, Younger couples that are, you know, uh, like Sam and Deanna, and, and they're expecting. And I found out while well, I was down there, my uh, my nephew and his wife, they're expecting their third child. And I was, uh, I was, I start thinking about that, and I started praying for them. And I was thankful for for uh, good Christian parents, that you know, raising their children in church. And then I started. I was reminded of, uh, I don't know, I don't even know how. You know, you know, I mean, you're up there, you're just thinking, uh, you know, sometimes, and then, you know, your your thoughts go, it's like, how did I get to here, you know, but it, it wasn't too big of a, a stretch, I, I was reminded that uh, it was this week last year that Kaylin got saved, and I, and I started getting excited about that, and then <laughs> I would think about it, and, and I, I was out in the woods, so it's a good thing I'm not one of those guys that get excited and start shouting, because that would have been <laughs> counterproductive. Uh, but, you know, I'd, I'd start thinking about it, start crying a little bit. And I thought, man, my eyes are going to be all, did I rub them with my glove? And, you know, I felt like, man, I'm irritating my eyes. And then, then I'm like, well, who cares, you know? Uh, but, but I was thinking about that, excited about uh, uh, the, a little, one of the children getting saved. I used to, what did we say? I was at my great niece, I guess that's what it is. And I, I'm definitely her great uncle. And uh, but the idea that the, the thing of the fact that she got saved last year. And uh, in fact, I, I looked it up on my phone. It's like I think I, I think I have this on my. What if they sent a video that she said she got? It. Now I, I found it sitting in the woods. I found it, and I didn't play it for a couple of reasons. One, the noise. It's like no, I know to be crying. Then. Uh, but the, but the thing is, I I, I, was, I couldn't help but. But the thing is, I was writing on my notes. It's like, I was, being out there, and uh, I wasn't watching the news. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking up the news. I, you know, I was just thinking, uh, praying for uh, people I cared about. And uh, thinking about uh, someone getting saved. And then, you know what? I wasn't getting stressed out then. I was excited. But we need to think of the positive thought. And like I said, it, it'll take, it takes some work. But we can do it. And we need to do it. Not only that, we need to uh, hear positive sounds. Not only think positive thoughts, hear positive sounds. Isaiah 22, 14, And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord. You know, the different, uh, <laughs> the many things that, that people hear Maybe we hear uh, at work. You know the the, the filth and the, the the things that uh, you know that, that you shouldn't be listening to, or things you know, and you don't want to listen to. Maybe it's you're in a job where you know what uh, you just you work with a bunch of people, and you don't you know you're not the guy in charge of the radio. You know uh, that's Sam. He's not in charge of the radio. He tries. Uh, you know, but two-man crew, and he's the little guy. Uh, but, the, but the thing is, uh, you know, but, but there's some things that you end up hearing that, you know, you don't even want to hear. Mm -hmm. 
But then there's some things we hear that, you know what, we do have control over. And we need to listen to the things that are good. Amen. And listen to uh, things from God's word. Amen. And, then, and, uh, and, and I don't know about you, uh, since the election, I have, I have actively stayed away from the news. And uh, uh, I used to have the Fox app. I got rid of that. And uh, you know what? They can go off the air as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> See, I'm going off. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, uh, but, but I watch, I, I'm, I'm more careful now than I was with the news. Like, I, I'll, I'll check a little bit. You know, just that I figure if Trump ends up becoming president, we'll know because of, you know, there'll be a mob, you know, in Michigan City or, you know, in every every city. Uh, or, you know, but the, the different thing, I, I kind of keep an eye on what's going on, but not like I used to. And the thing is, we need, we need to hear positive sounds. It seemed like with that the 24 hour or the 24 hour news cycle they call I don't know I've watched enough of it uh, to realize it's like it might go on for 24 hours but it's it's only about 30 minutes of news <laughs> you know, it's like you like, it's like wait a minute uh, you know, uh, when you know what they're gonna say before they say it you I'm turn off now and, uh, but but hear positive sounds we were like I said we were down with my nephew and uh, Great niece. Uh, I think she's second grade. And Brother Sean, she, she walked up, you know, uh, she goes, Here, I want to tell you my verses. I'm like, and uh, it was, I forget the chat, but it was like verses 33 through 41. Okay, she, she told me, I'm basically done. She goes, Well, now, you know, well, I want to start at the beginning. Okay. She went to start at verse one. She did verse. She went through one through forty-one. She'd been learning it all semester at school, passages at a time, and uh, she got a couple, uh, two or three helpsies. But she got, but she, but she said it. And her mom goes, "Yeah, she, she puts us to shame." Oh, you know, shame! It's like I'm gonna go in my room now and start studying. You know, yeah. Uh, but you know, hearing that little girl, uh, quote forty-one verses. You know what? That, that was positive. That was exciting. That was encouraging. And the fact that we we need to hear those positive sounds. And yes, there are some things that we hear that that we might not have control over. But the thing is, we're, there are some things that we can have control over. We need to we need to guard ourselves. And like I said, I'm not saying be oblivious to what's going on. You know, uh, in our country and around the world, but we but we don't have to sit there and listen to it all day. You know, uh, even if it's Ben Shapiro, we don't need to. Listen, you know, and uh, it's like he, he makes your head spin anyway because he talks so fast. Uh, but the uh, but the thing is, uh, we need to be careful what we listen to. Hear positive sounds. Then we need to see positive sights. See positive sights. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 2. You know, there are those that look for the bad in people. They look for the bad in circumstances. And they only, they'll find, they're going to find the false. They're going to find in, uh, the negative. Where is it there? The cup is always half. Half empty, yeah. But we need, as Christians, we need to look for the good. We need to look. We need to look to Jesus. You know, it, it, when it comes to the negative, that that's easy to find. You start looking at something, uh, you know, a situation or whatever, and, and and finding that negative, you know what? That that comes pretty, pretty natural to us. Find a finding that positive. You know what? Uh, it doesn't come natural, but you know what? If we try, if we decide we're going to look for the positive, sure. you know what? It's it's not all that hard. 
We just got to determine, decide, hey, that's what I'm going to do. We need to see see the see positive sides. Do we look for the positive in people? We need to, we need to be looking on that, uh, you know, on the positive. You know, there are parents that you know always always see the worst in their kids. I, I, I might have told this story once before. I remember uh, when Sam was going into, I think it was first grade. First or second. I think it was first. And they passed out, which I always hate this. You go you go to the you know, week before school starts and uh, you find out uh, you know, here's their class, and then the teacher says, Here, fill this out. Fill this out, you know. You know, the cover B, here, fill this out. It's like I'm not your student, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, and then we had to read the handbook every year. And, uh, and the thing is, uh, but the thing is, there was one where it says, uh, write down some positive characteristics. And you know what? When he, when he was, a, well, I probably do now, but I don't. Uh, when he was little, uh, you know, and, and I wanted him to turn out right. And you know what? I can tell you, I can tell you, you know, Sam, you know, uh, he's pretty good, but you know what? He needs a little work here. And he, you know, and, and uh, you know, you know, he, he uh, we're still working on him. And you know, basically, I knew where his weaknesses were, where he needed some, you know, uh, some help. Uh, but it was like a list, list uh, uh, some positive things about him, positive character traits. And you know what? It was uh, I was convicted because it was like I had to think for a few minutes. You know, so, and and I loved him. I still do. And, uh, and, and, and I, I wanted what was best for him, but it was, yeah, I was like, well, you know what? Uh, he, he's pretty good here, but I need, you know, he needs work here, and we need to, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, bring him in over here. And, and it was it, it, coming up with something positive took just a minute. And I, and I thought, well, you know what? That's not right. And we need to see the positive, too. We need to be, uh, we need to hear the positive sounds. We need to see uh, the positive sights. We need to speak positive words. We need to speak positive words. Talk ye of all his wondrous works in Psalms 1 and 5 2. You know, most, uh, most people, they want, they want to talk about uh, bad things. You know, the, something, that happened, something bad happened to somebody. You know, some bad event or whatever it may be. said before, you know, uh, when, it, when it's bad news, you look for somebody to tell it. Tell it to. It's like, why well, tell it? You know, that, surely that's true. But if it's good news, you know, well, well somebody, you know what, they, they did is, well, you know, well, is that really how it was? You know what, well, uh, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit. You know, but if it's something bad about them, about somebody, Facebook, or the FB, and, uh, uh, and, and, you know, it's like, oh, did you hear that? Did you, you know. But the thing is, we need to speak positive words. Your, your words will leave a lasting impression on people, especially children. If you think about it, <laughs> in, if you think back when you were a kid, way back, uh, in, 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 you think of... You probably can think of somebody that, that said something to you that encouraged you. I told you about when, when Brother Vogel was here. And uh, how Brother Wurtz, he was my uh, uh, junior high youth, youth, youth pastor, and, and how he encouraged me. But I can, I can tell you other instances where somebody uh, flew off the handle, and maybe, <laughs> I, I remember going to a camp in Florida, so I was, I was, you know, I was, 13 when we moved up here, so it was before that. And and I went to a camp, and and I don't know, I could probably tell you that if I said the name, you he was kind of a he was kind of big in camp stuff. It was Friday night, and it was one of those deals. Everybody's excited, you know. Everybody's juiced up. 
It's like, go to camp, go back to your cabins, go to bed. Well, there were some of the others. Our cabin was full, so, you know, it kind of had like a, all the way around the wall, a row down the middle. I was on the far side, and there were some guys playing around, talking. Well, this camp director, he'd had enough, you know, he had enough, and, and the, one of the counselors, it was getting late. Everything was dark. And he sent one of them, and this camp director, he was walking up and down in between the cabins. He sent, uh, and, and the counselor sent this one kid out. And as soon as he got out, he come running back in, because this director was right behind him. And he came in, and he was screaming. You know, screaming, hollering, grabbing, the, you know, those metal bunks on the concrete. And he's shaking them and yelling and screaming. I wasn't really scared. I was, you know. I was out of the line of fire. <laughs> but here's the thing. I remember, I remember who he was. And I and you know what? <laughs> Did he do anything good that, that month that week? I mean he was the director, he wasn't the one preaching it. Sure, I mean that I mean I think it was a fine camp. But you know what I remember? Yeah. I remember that. Mm. You know, we think well, <laughs> you know, uh, you know what I just uh, they just got on my last nerve, and I, and you know, uh, I cut loose. Well, you know what? That might be what they remember, and probably will be what they remember. The thing is, we need to speak positive words, and there, <laughs> there, there are people you're gonna that you uh, that look up to you, that are watching you. That you know what? If you you speak positive words, they're gonna remember that. But if you said, you know, well, I just got in the flesh, and I, I, you know what, they had it coming, and I just cut loose, you know what, they'll remember that too. Long, they'll remember long after you, you've forgotten it. Speak positive words, and perform positive deeds. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, Colossians 3.23. You know, many, many, uh, many uh, deeds are negative. The deeds of many are negative. They're, they're, you know, they're <laughs> focused on themselves. Uh, they're dishonest. They're displeasing to God. But we need to perform positive deeds. We need to be lifting up those that are down. We need a witness for Christ, telling folks about Him, Amen. performing those positive deeds. You know, we we uh, do we try to be an encouragement, or do we just sit back and what do we just oh, want encouragement? I think we all enjoy being encouraged. But how many how how important is it to you or to me to be an encouragement? That's it. You know, I think, well, you know, uh, you know like, well, if I encourage, you know, I try to encourage people, who's going to encourage me? Well, one, if, if, you brighten, if you brighten someone's day, you know what? That encourages you, too. If you're not com just completely absorbed with self, and if you are, you're not going to be trying to help anyone else anyway. But brightening, so, uh, you know, making somebody's day, that'll encourage you, too. So you know, you know, well, who's going to encourage me? Well, you can encourage yourself by being an encouragement to others. You know, we need to look for ways to be an encouragement. As I said, you know, everybody seems to be going through uh, some, uh, some rough times now. We need to be looking for ways to encourage folks. You know what? It, a lot of times it doesn't cost any money. It doesn't cost even that much time. But we need to, we need to uh, look for ways to encourage folks. Uh, I was and I were talking, she goes, uh, when I talk to people at the counter, she goes, and, and they'll say thanks, and, I, and she goes, you know, I usually say no problem, but I'm trying to change that. But she said, I try to say, my pleasure. Was trying to, she's trying to, she goes, I'm trying to make it more personal. It's like, 
Okay, that's cool. And I said, well, you, when she, she said, my, it, my pleasure, I said, well, were you trying to get a job at Chick-fil-A? And she said, no, I'm just, just trying to be more personal. And it's like, well, okay, you know, it, being a little bit more personal, you know, that changing that is really, it's not, it's not that hard. It doesn't take any more time. But you know what? Uh, who doesn't enjoy uh, having, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody ch check out, ringing out at it, the it's it's register that has a, has a good attitude, a pleasant attitude. You know, and it really takes a little bit more effort when your face is covered because they can't see a smile. Uh, but, but the thing is that positive deeds, we need to perform positive deeds and then we need to attend positive places. We need to attend positive places. I was glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. You know, we, we, need, to, uh, we need to be faithful to church. Amen. You know, we, we as Christians, we hurt, we hurt our testimonies, we hurt our influence when we go to the wrong places in, the, in search of entertainment. You know, the thing is, uh, I know it's 2020, but you know what? Christians have no place in a bar. Mm -hmm. You know, don't, don't say too much about that anymore. You know, they, you know, they, they start, uh, you know, go uh, talk about, well, you, you know, we need to, we don't really need to be going to the movies either. You could walk into one that has five, six different movies. Well, people watching don't know which one you're going to. And I have plenty of, plenty of, you know, of the customers, Sam and I deal with. I say, oh, have you seen, if, if, it's a, if it's a decent movie, you know, they know what they're saying. They say, oh, have you seen this one? It's a good one. You would like this one. <laughs> he said, uh, I had one customer that said, have you, Mr. Rogers, did you, have you seen Mr. Rogers? Like, no, I didn't see that movie. Oh, you should, you, you need to go see Mr. She goes, you remind me of him. <laughs> and this is, but then, I thought, well, change my shoes, you know. And then, and then she, and then really, it was, it was quite a compliment when, what she got from, from the movie about Mr. Rogers and, and caring for people. So I was like, so she, she paid me a compliment. It just sounded funny when she said it. <laughs> and uh, I told Sam, don't be going around telling her. <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, and, and uh, you know, there are some that, that are okay. But you know what? He, we as Christians, we don't need to be going to those places. Seems like, we're, as I say, you know, the world gets worse, and we as Christians, we start, uh, you know, we just keep that distance, six feet, you know, and, but you know what? We won't get any part of the way. We'll just keep that distance. I heard of a, a fellow, he went to the, uh, he went to the bar. And uh, and he he met a woman. I was saying picked up a woman. That didn't sound right. But anyhow, uh, he met someone. They started talking. Lo and behold, they went to the same church. It's like, hey, what do you know? And it's like, well, you know what? Neither one of you should have been there. And ended up getting married. Then they got divorced. It's like, you know. I can't believe that our relationship that started in a bar didn't work out. You know, let me guess, it's God's fault, you know. But, but the thing is, uh, we need to not go to those wrong places to find entertainment. We need to attend positive places. You know, we need to, uh, we need to go to church and get encouraged to do what's right. To get the strength to stand. Keep pressing forward for him. Right. And not only that, it encourages your church family. I'm paraphrasing there. I heard a preacher say, uh, if, if you won't come for yourself, come for somebody else. Well, the idea is like, when you showing up and you being there, uh, it encourages those in church around you. Right. You know what? It surely does. Right. You think, well, I don't know about that. Well, I'm telling you. 
It does. <laughs> and, and you know, oh, tell, tell me that you haven't ever been in this situation. You went to church and you were in talk, uh, you know, maybe a, a friend or something, and, and they weren't there, and it was like, oh, they're not there. I'm not saying you cried about it, but it was like, it, it kind of like, oh, I thought I'd see them there. But you can be an encouragement. You can get encouraged. You can be an encourager. We can be positive. But it's going to take some work. It's going to take some effort. But with God's help, we can do it. We, can, we need to uh, perform those positive deeds, attend the positive places, speak those positive words. And think positive thoughts, hear positive sounds, and see the positive sights. If we do that, you know what? We can stay positive no matter what we're facing. Whether we're facing uh, uh, more of the same with the COVID or, or whatever we, it may be that we, we face here in the next few months. We can stay positive. Now, you, you, can, you can get negative, too. Just let yourself, just don't even try and you'll be negative. <laughs> you know what? That'll come natural. But you know what? We as Christians, we should, we should strive to be positive. Do we always hit the mark on being positive? No, not always. But the thing is, we, we, can, uh, we can hit it a lot more times than we do if we work at it. 